Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I don't know if you caught it, but a couple of days, Marquez Brownlee of MKBHD fame, uh, he posted a really interesting video. He titled it, What I Really Think of the iPhone. And I, I stole his title, full disclosure. Uh, but with, in this video, it was like a 50 minute long video where he just really went into deep dive on aspects of the iPhone that he feels like he can't normally go into that much detail in a typical review. And I thought that was a really cool idea, which gave me the inspiration, the motivation to do this video that I've been wanting to do for a while. And let's just talk about what I really think about the iPhone when it comes to listening to music. So just full disclosure, I am honestly an iPhone guy. I prefer iPhone to Android for most things. Just this thing does a lot of things apart from listening to music. And for most of those things, I generally prefer iPhone. But when it comes to listening to music, it gets a little bit more complicated. So in this video, I want to go through just kind of like a number of different points about how the iPhone is for music. And some of them are going to be, you know, fairly obvious topics. You're probably thinking headphone jack. We'll talk about that. Um, but we might be talking about some things that are a little bit more particular to audio files. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into those topics. And if you've got any questions, any thoughts at the end of this video, this is a live stream. So stick around the live chat. We can have a little conversation at the end of it. But for now, let's talk about, well, let's go ahead and just talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the headphone jack or the lack thereof on the iPhone. So it's actually kind of interesting. I didn't really realize this until I started looking into it, but it's actually been just about, it's been basically five years since Apple took away the headphone jack. And I mean, it's uh, Android, basically most Android devices have kind of followed suit, right? There's not a lot of premium smartphones that come with headphone jacks anymore, but at the very least in the Android space, there still are some phones, like here's my Sony Xperia 10, some phones that you can get with a headphone jack. In the iPhone space, there's nothing that Apple still sells that has a headphone jack on it, which for an audiophile like me, you might think that is just about the worst thing in the world that you could do. But I gotta be honest, I'm not too worried about the loss of the headphone jack. And the big reason why is, well, these things, these dongles, which I was one of the biggest haters of this thing. Well, I can't say I was one of the biggest haters, but I'll be honest, this, this to me was not a good solution, uh, you know, just theoretically. And, and, and but in practice, living with these things, I actually kind of like these dongles. So here's why. All right, let's take, um, let's take a phone like my Xperia 10, which I mentioned it has a headphone jack. There you go if you want to see it. But honestly, here's the thing that most people don't really consider when they're, when they're considering headphone jacks built into their phones is it's not just whether or not you have this port on your phone. They're, they're basically, there's a DAC and an amplifier built into the phone in order to power this analog output. If the DAC and amp in your phone aren't very high quality, the sound quality out of your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack isn't going to be that great. And that is the case here with my Xperia. I actually really love this phone. This is my main music listening to listening device, but I still end up using an external DAC amp uh, because the headphone jack is just not very good quality. Now, Apple was generally pretty good about putting nice DACs in their devices, but this is a good way to guarantee that you're going to get a nice DAC. Now, I, I don't think a lot of people think about this, but the Apple dongle is actually objectively a good measuring audio device. Um, I'm not necessarily the biggest uh, proponent of objectivity when it comes to this sort of thing, but if you're really concerned about um, how well a thing measures, whether it's you know having a low output impedance, low distortion, low noise, uh, and a decent amount of power, the Apple dongle actually does that pretty well. And what's kind of cool about the Apple dongle is that, you know, you don't have to worry about what is the quality of the DAC and the amp built into my phone, because you can just get an Apple dongle and make any phone sound great, right? This is the USB-C version of the Apple dongle, works on Android, and you don't have to worry about whether or not your phone has a good DAC amp. So I gotta be honest, the loss of the headphone jack, I actually think that was a good thing. 
Uh, as much as I definitely would not have said that five years ago, I think the loss of the headphone jack was good for audiophiles like me. The only downside, and this is gonna be uh, kind of an annoying little quibble, is that when it comes to wrapping up a cable with a dongle attached to it, it's just, that's a bit goofy, especially when you've got a right angle cable like this. It's a little sloppy, uh, but for an audiophile like me, that's an inconvenience that I am willing to deal with. So that is my thoughts on the, the headphone jack, but let's go ahead and dive into a little bit more. Another topic, okay? The Apple's motivation when they got rid of the headphone jack on this iPhone was not to give you really nice sounding dongles. Really their motivation was to sell you Bluetooth headphones like the AirPods, and I do quite love the AirPods if I'm honest. Uh, these are a great little device, but I don't really use them for listening to music that much. Um, just because generally when it comes to my music listening habits, I enjoy sort of the maximalization that comes from taking a wired headphone like this. This is a very nice sounding set, by the way. For the AirPods, you know, these things are great for podcasts, great for watching YouTube, but for listening to music, I'm not the biggest fan. So you, Bluetooth is just generally, it's got a few, a few sort of bottlenecks, all right? Bottleneck number one is that um, when you're dealing with a Bluetooth device, you gotta make sure that you have a DAC and an amplifier built into each earpiece that will sound pretty good. And like we just got done saying, not all DACs and amps actually sound that good, especially when they're small. Of course, Apple's shown that they can do it pretty well, um, but it's definitely not the case for all Bluetooth headphones. And that kind of brings up another point is that when it comes to audio file friendly, um, Bluetooth gear, like the AirPods Pro are actually pretty solid in that front, but there really aren't a lot of options. So for a, a guy like me that wants to try out different headphones and, and always be exploring, in the Bluetooth space, there's just not a lot that sounds that great. Another problem with Bluetooth, and this is an Apple specific thing, well, yeah, I'm gonna say this is an Apple specific thing, is Bluetooth codecs. So let me bring in this note. I don't know if these things mean anything to you, uh, but they mean a lot to a person like me, all right? These are basically different codecs for Bluetooth. There's SBC, AAC, Aptex, and LDAC. And if you are measuring, you know, well, I guess we'll talk a little bit about like why there are different Bluetooth codecs. And, you know, some of them are better for latency. Some of them are better for battery life. You know, there's different trade-offs for stability and then ultimately trade-offs for sound quality. When it comes to sound quality, I would rank these things actually kind of in the reverse order of what they're listed. Like LDAC is number one, Aptex is probably number two, AAC is number three, and SBC is number four, just for sound quality, right? So for listening to music, I don't really care about the latency. I'd, I'm an audiophile, I'm a maximalist, so I don't really care about the battery life. I just want the best audio quality. But unfortunately, on iPhone, you don't get Aptex and you don't get LDAC. You just get SBC and AAC. And now AAC doesn't sound that bad, especially in Apple's implementations. They're generally pretty good about it. But again, as a maximalist, I really wish I could get LDAC. And Android does LDAC, iPhone, unfortunately, does not. Now it's gonna take me into a different category entirely, uh, and that is storage options. So there's no micro SD card slot on any iPhone. There never has been. I basically am gonna say it. there's never gonna be. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, this Sony Xperia 10 is a pretty decent transport for a music setup like this, is that there is a micro SD card in here. Right, so if I want to uh, upgrade the space on my iPhone, here, I just brought up the pricing, just, so, just to remind folks, right? By default, you get 64 gigs. For 50 bucks extra, you get an extra 64 gigs. And then for another $100, you get 128 gigs. So basically $100, $100 to get 128 gigabytes of space. Whereas with a micro SD card like this, and that is a micro SD card, 128 gigs you can get for 20 bucks, all right? And if you need to upgrade it in the future, you need a 256 gigs, it's like 30 bucks. And you don't have to make that decision. You don't have to rebuy 
that memory card every time you buy a new phone. Whereas with the built-in memory in an iPhone, if I go from this to an iPhone 15, which doesn't exist, I'm gonna have to buy that 128 gigs or 256 gigs again. And you might be thinking that who has that much music? Um, nerds like me, we have that much music. I've got, I don't know, I've got about 120 gigs of music right now. Uh, mostly it's in flat format, but that's just a limitation of the iPhone. Like if I want to put all of my music library on here, I basically have to get the 256 gigabyte iPhone. And that's a lot of money for a thing that I'm gonna end up selling this thing in a couple of years and getting a new phone and then I'll have to buy it again. I find that pretty annoying. Um, and then I guess it's gonna take us into, yeah, this is my last category, is uh, the applications, all right? Surprisingly, well, all right, I'm gonna start with the good, okay? And this is, this is, this is gonna be a little bit particular to a person like me who has a music library that likes to load my own music onto my phone or onto my listening device. If you are into streaming services like Spotify, Bandcamp, Apple Music, whatever, you're fine here. This is not gonna be a serious concern for you, right? If you got Spotify, Spotify here is as good as it is on Android, I think. I'm not actually a Spotify user, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume Spotify here is as good as it is on Android and same goes for Tidal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For a person like me though, I've got all my music locally. I've, you know, I've got a library of MP3 and FLAC files. So streaming services aren't the solution. Uh, there is the stock Android or the stock music app that Apple has, which is actually not a bad music app. I mean, it's not complicated. It's not fancy, but that's honestly, that's perfectly fine for me. Honestly, what I want is I want this sort of organization. I want to be able to sort by artists, dig into an artist, look at their albums, dig into an album and listen to the music. That's really all I want out of the music app. So I don't need a lot of complication, but surprisingly, the Apple Music app is kind of like the only good option on iPhone. Uh, I've got a couple others that I've tried out here. Um, there's one called Vox and another one called Flackbox. Uh, Vox is an interesting application. I have a feeling that would be pretty decent if I was interested in paying a monthly subscription fee, but I'm not. Uh, Flackbox, uh, this is I think maybe a good example of how janky some of these things are. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. Um, oh wow, I should have done this beforehand. But I wanna show you just kinda of how janky this app is. And I think it's fairly indicative of a lot of other music apps. It's just like I'm browsing literally folders. There's no album arts. Um, I can, I mean, this is streaming from Google Drive, which is kinda of cool, but it's also kinda of limited. Um, it's just not the prettiest app. And when it comes to apps on Android, there are there is no shortage of music apps. A lot of really good options. The one I use personally, Sony Music Center. Again, it's not a complicated app. It's just got a general artist browsing view. Uh, you can dive in and find your albums, dive in and listen to your songs. Super simple, that's all I need. And on Android, there's a ton of options there. An iPhone, unfortunately, I can't really find any options that I like. They're just aesthetically kind of a mess and maybe that doesn't bother most people. So I could stick with the stock music app, right? I just got done saying that's pretty, pretty good enough, but I've got a couple problems with this stock music app, all right? Problem number one is that to get music onto it, known as iTunes is that loading music into it is actually really quite tedious. Uh, meanwhile, I've got another app that I use called Swinzian where it just automatically monitor a folder and, and load into music. So that's problem number one. But problem number two, and this is the big problem, is that Apple Music, whether on the phone or on my computer, doesn't actually play FLAC. There's no FLAC support still. Um, and really no good reason for it, except that Apple wants to push their ALAC format, which is basically the same thing. And frankly, I could convert all of my music over to ALAC and I have done that in the past, but then I ran into other compatibility issues with apps on Android. And I personally decided to go ahead and favor the Android side. 
because of, well, some of the other reasons that we talked about. Um, so yeah, basically, there's, there's just a really depressing lack of great flack options on the iPhone. And again, if you're listening to Spotify, you're listening to Tidal, whatever, it doesn't matter to you. To me, it does matter. Uh, and then maybe I'll go ahead and just end this with my last quick point on the app stuff is there's just because Apple's a little bit more controlled with their stuff, there's no options for like a system wide EQ. Now I'm not a big EQ person, so this actually doesn't affect me that much, but I thought worth mentioning. Um, you know, on Android, you can find apps that will give you system wide EQ, system wide, you know, parametric equalizer, just really fine tuned control over your audio here in the Apple world. If your music app doesn't have it, and this app has like the stock music app has just really super basic EQ options. Like you can choose a rock or a pop filter or something like that. But if your app doesn't have support for it, you don't get to equalize again, not a big deal for me, but there you go. So that about does it for my thoughts on the iPhone when it comes to listening to music. Again, if you're listening to streaming services, I don't know, I feel like the iPhone honestly is not a bad option. It's probably just as good as Android. You can listen to those streaming services. You don't have to worry about storage. You don't have to worry about the lack of flack support or anything like that. And then if you want good audio quality out of the headphone jack, well, use a dongle and you're gonna get good audio quality. But if you're a person like me and you're kind of living outside of the walled gardens, and maybe I'm just swimming upstream for no reason, but if you've got your own music library and it's in a flak format, I feel like the iPhone just kind of a letdown, honestly. Now, full disclosure, like I said up front, I am an iPhone user. This is my primary phone. But when it comes to listening to music, I do prefer Android. So that is going to be the end of this video. If you have any thoughts, you know, your own thoughts on iPhone for music, leave them in the comments down below. I'm actually kind of interested to see if there are some iPhone apps out there that I haven't tried yet. I feel like I've tried them all, but I'm sure there's something out there that you know about that I don't. So leave it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, if you found this video useful, helpful, interesting, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and then ding the bell because I actually do these videos live. This is live right now. And if you wanna be around for the next live stream and have a conversation with me, you ding the bell, YouTube will let you know when I'm live. And then I'll see you in the next super review and we can chat like I'm about to with the folks that are here right now. Have a good night, have a good night.